Welcome to AEW Unrestricted, official podcast of All Elite Wrestling. I'm here, Aubrey Edwards. Also here is my close personal longtime friend, Tony Schiavone. What are you doing, Tony? How you doing? Hey, uh, what a duo we have become. And a big shout out to you, everybody that's been working on our video games. AEW Casino game is still available. Yeah. Out there to download for for you at uh, at Google Play or the App Store. Hell yeah. Download it, play it, spend your money. Spend your money. Spend your money, earn some money. It's all good. It's all great. Super fun. Anyway, speaking of money, we got one guy here who's absolute money and I absolutely mm-hmm. love. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was I don't good. Know if good you segue. Heard. I know, right? He's uh he's waxed and vaxxed, ready for hot boy summer. That's right. Have, I'm living <laughs> big big boy living, big hot living. I know Tony knows. Uh yeah, we got Peter Avalon here. And for those of you watching uh the YouTube version, Peter is dressed in a robe, as you would uh come to imagine. I I mm-hmm. like to imagine he just rolled out of bed, ready to go. I did. There's the bed uh behind me. It's made. <laughs> and also the red sheets match my robe. So if you see I like a a theme going on. I like it. Very, very consistent. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, Peter Avalon, here's your accolades. We like to run them down at the beginning. If we missed anything, you can let us know. Let's do it. All right. 2015 PWI Top 500, ranked 464. Uh, champion uh, uh, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood Heritage Heavyweight Champion. The longest reigning of all time at 672 days. Nobody Woo! since then has been able to touch my record at Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. So just saying. There's all right. right. Coming up short. No, sorry. Twice you were the tag team, Heritage Tag Team Champions with uh, Ray Rosas. Three times, actually. I Whoa. busted three times. That is incorrect, but three times. All right. We, we, we want to get it right. United Wrestling Network Television Champion. Mm-hmm. Insane Wrestling, which certainly fits you. Insane Wrestling League Anarchy Champion. Insane mm-hmm. Wrestling League World Heavyweight Champion. SoCal Pro Wrestling Tag Team Champion. And West Coast Wrestling Connection tag team champion as well mm-hmm. anything else we miss i am uh the wrestling cares uh, greatest tag team of all time in 2015 i have a ring that proves it with uh, ray rosas um uh, i was nor Furnham in tna oh we'll get to that we'll get to that <laughs> so yeah that's about it that i can think of right now oh right. man oh boy so so you're currently in the wingman, which is, uh, as, as I've mentioned to like JD and Caesar this week, like my absolute favorite faction, like I'm very much like my, my start was in comedy wrestling. So you guys yes. having the characters and the dynamic that you do totally speaks to me and awesome. everything that I love about wrestling. So big fan of that. But prior to that, you were also the librarian. So you've had kind of a nice, nice arc and character change, uh, during mm. your time at AEW. Uh, absolutely. but I do want to dive into the wingman a little bit. Um, how did that faction come together? Because I know we had the walk off and you you lost um, yeah. as, as you did. We'll talk about that, too. Uh, and then Caesar came out as as sort of like your bodyguard. Nemeth got at it at one point. JD, like, how did this all come to be? Uh, I think it's just an idea that when people see something next to each other, it just kind of works. I think the idea for the wingman was Christian's idea. Really? Yeah, I think he said to put the four of us together, and Tony liked it. Um, I was with Cesar. Cesar already is a, a pretty picture. Um, and then Nemeth and uh, Nemeth and Drake were together. Uh, I had hurt myself. I have a hurt knee still. I'm still out with an injury. Uh, so that had taken me off TV for a little bit. So um, I'm not sure when the decision was made to put us together. I just kind of got filled in. And then when I came back, I'm like, here I am, boys. Let's play. Yeah. <laughs> Such a dynamic, diverse crew, if I can use those terms. Uh, they really are. and I love it. I, 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 the fact that J.D. comes out with you guys, it's just – and who's talked J.D. into that uh, crazy-looking top? I mean, it's like <laughs> – The mesh one? The that mesh was Nemeth. One. With the gold. That was Nemeth. That oh, was really? Nemeth. He, he, brought a, he brought him a couple shirts, and he's like, pick one. And that was the one he picked, so – Oh, wow. Uh, it was good. JD, JD's killing it. He's a he's a fashionista and he's a wonderful man and he's and he's a big hunk. <laughs> Very big hunk. One of yep. uh, hey, oh, so talk good. about what, what all uh, but being the elite, which BTE has been such a staple in wrestling uh, for so many years. It's done so many things for people. Obviously, with the Bucks, what has it done for the wingmen? You think? 
it just kind of gives us an opportunity to show our uh, show our chops, I guess. It varies all over the place what we can do. Uh, I didn't know Cesar before we really were joined together doing this thing. And he's hilarious. He's very creative. Uh, he's, 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 he's a very, very intelligent, uh, creative human. And, um, I'm, I, I'm glad I can, I'm glad I'm able to, to learn about him with this. And we've been able to put together a lot of fun stuff. Uh, he's been helping me also with the, uh, the leave a bait stuff too. So I get to kind of show, uh, different acting. It's comedy, it's drama, it's all over the place and it's been fun. So that's, uh, that's incredible. It's, it's yeah. interesting. Like you know so many of us backstage, like we're all friends, but I guess it makes sense. Like, I'm not a part of a faction. I don't know. I wouldn't consider the Ref Corps a faction. But right. uh, it's it's always interesting to see, like, all of the people that kind of spend a lot of time together and they all sort of become and grow as performers individually just because they're being built up by each other. So absolutely, Absolutely. And then when you, I think there's just sometimes as performers, there's just some stuff you end up maybe you never kind of get to or you just don't talk about because you just don't do it. And I have a, with my production background with the, with the Hollywood show and everything, I, and uh, I ran a championship wrestling from Arizona for two years. I was having to put together television and talking for producing and everything like this. And <clears throat> when Cesar comes in and has ideas and we can start and figure out how to build them, it's like we start to realize that there's a lot of other stuff that we have in common that we probably would never have talked about just because now we're trying to film something. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Someone came in with a Kama Sutra book and you're just like, yeah, let's do it, brother. Yeah. How can we do? How can we make, how can we play with this? What can we do? So you joined AEW originally as the librarian, which was announced on BTE. So yeah. when when did you find out about the librarian gimmick and who pitched it to you? Uh, I I think it was. It was at a wrestling show in in L.A. I want to say. uh CD and the Bucks told me about it. Cody had slid into my DMs at one point to tell me to kind of reserve, uh, I think, May of 20, 2019. Didn't tell me details. He just said, hey, kind of keep it available. And I said, sure. Uh, and then I kind of got details from the Bucks and everything. They told me about the the librarian idea and then what they wanted to do. And I was like, yeah, I'm in. I'm glad you came came to me with something. Uh, what they, they kind of put it as something silly that we think only you could get over. Uh, and they have very vague, very vague details. It was like, you're, you work at a library and you shush people. So like, that's the, that's the gist of it. And we think you could get something like that over. It's like, yeah, absolutely. And uh, how did the pairing with Leva Bates come about? I think, you know how, you know how brainstorming goes and wrestling yeah. goes and everything. Right. It's just a, a discussion and everything changes as the day goes on. So, I think they were telling, they figured out that uh, they were going to, the way they were going to introduce the librarian is like via a contest, like a fan contest that submit that. your, yeah, submit your video, a promo librarian, promo, whatever. And, and a bunch of people uh, did it, but the, mm -hmm. the, what they were originally going to do was that I, I won it. I became the librarian and I won it. I didn't do a video. So it was going to be this whole, this whole thing. And I think they assumed that it would not get a positive reaction that way. So they're like, we have to, we have to kind of let someone become a librarian. And Leva Bates' video did so well uh, that that's why she was considered. And then they just, they put us together, um, which was great when the, the pairing, because like once they paired us up, like legitimately like a year prior was the first time I had ever met her and worked with her because I had wrestled her in Los Angeles uh, in a tag match. And uh, I thought she was great then. I thought she was a great person. And now a year later, getting to be paired up with her and work with her, I was like, this is awesome. This is great. Yeah. I'm familiar, you know. I love the dynamic that you two had sitting ringside as well during the pandemic and just everything that you guys had done right from your your sort of romance on BTE that is that sort of re-blossomed a little bit. Like, I think it's one of those I, I personally didn't think the gimmick was really going to work. And I think you two absolutely made it work. And it was absolutely incredible. Um, there was not a lot. There was not a lot really told to us about yeah. it. So it's like, sure. We kind of just kind of make what you can do. Felt yeah. it out. Yeah. Uh, well, that's, yeah. Uh, let me inject something to here on that before you go to the next question, Aubrey, is that it's one of the great things we do. They let your creativity uh, flow, don't they? Yeah. I mean, they, absolutely. yeah, they, yeah, good stuff.
So you made your AEW wrestling debut at Fight mm-hmm. for the Fallen versus Sunny Kiss. Mm-hmm. Uh, when did you find out that you were wrestling in that show versus Sunny? Good question. I don't remember when I found out. I know I was excited for it. And I remember that day, like, I was hype. I was hype. I was nervous. I was like, this is great. This is ready. I'm ready. I'm, I'm so stoked. I don't remember exactly when I found out, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's all just a blur. Yeah, it's all a blur. And then it's just like, I, I just uh, watching it back and like the, the jib shots coming in, zooming in, and then watching me just strut out. I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. Yeah. 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 It's uh, quite, uh, quite the memories back then, too, when we first started. And uh, what, other than those camera shots, any other memories you pull away from that match, your first match? Just, just all of it, everything. Just uh, walking out, and I had no music. So that, that was a, that was the first thing for me. I've always had entrance music and I've always had kind of entrance music. I kind of, I kind of shake my ass to and kind of come out and, and shake and Aubrey knows. Oh, uh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but now this was a new, a new thing of like, we're not, you know, I'm going to come out and it's just the silence. This had, this also was before we had figured out to shush people like during the entrance. So I came out to just silence and then the crowd saw me and Leva and they just booed the hell out of us. And when we got the react, the, that reaction, I felt really, really good about myself. And then nice. I thought the rest, I thought the rest of the match went, went well. So I remember enjoying it. I remember coming to the back. I remember Tony being hype, so hype for me, man. So hype for me in the match and everything. And I was, it felt really good. It felt really good. He was so stoked. He stood up and and, and uh, stood up over the seat in the Tony Wayne. And he yelled. He goes, "Hell yeah, Peter Avalon, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. Hell yeah, great <laughs> job!" Oh. <laughs> and he started putting over me and then the and my uh, television background, just like right yelling it in my face. And it's like, okay, great. This is great way to start the my time here and a great way to start the show. Hell yeah! Uh, it's been reported that Sandra, Miss Sandra, lead seamstress at AEW. Uh, said one of her favorite things that she's ever made uh, since coming to AEW is your robe, actually. Awesome. Uh, so did you come to Sandra with the design for that, or did she just say, here's a robe I made for you? Like, how does how does the creative process for putting your character into your gear work for you? That's a good step, yeah. Uh, I'm bad at design. I've just realized over the years I'm just bad at designing gear. So I lean on the uh, minimal. I lean on the minimal. And I, I know I feel like it makes stuff that's nice and minimal. Uh, when I switched over to the robes years ago, same thing. It was kind of a brainstorm with somebody. And it was kind of like, uh, here's a guideline. Good luck. <laughs> and then and they, usually they knock it out. But Sandra was a similar thing. I kind of told her the, the energy I was going for. And then she brought back uh, pretty much that jacket. I'm like, I came back. I said, I have I have this design that I commissioned, which was the librarian. Uh, shush thing that was on the back. I have it framed in my house now. Um, that's the only thing I had. I was like, look, I'm going to have this. I'm going to give you this. And then that was it. And then she brought me back uh, the robe that kind of looks like a smoker's jacket with the librarian thing on the back. And it's AEW colors. And it's like, Sandra, look at this beautiful piece. Like, I can't. She's just a pro, man. She's just a She's pro. So I kind of so just good. gave her an energy to vibe with, and then she just knocked it out. So, like, I I trust. I go to her for my stuff now. I usually could just trust her. Like, uh, it's very it's very rare that you could just kind of give people an energy. You have to kind of just you have to draw the damn image for people. And like, I need this. Like, I don't have to do that with Sandra. It's like here's a vibe. It's all you. We are talking to Peter Avalon. Uh, Peter, talk about the transition between or from. Uh, the librarian to pretty Peter Avalon. I, I know Cody had a hand in that, and he, uh, he did. Talk yeah. About that. yeah, he talk absolutely about. had a had a hand in in the in the direction that we went to with it at AEW. Uh, pretty Peter is just me. That's just my. That's just the way I I live my life. I've been Pretty Peter for all. Uh, I'm in my 13th year of wrestling now. That's been my pretty much what I what I've done. Uh, for a little bit, I switched over to to a, a gimmick called Professional Peter, and yeah. then when I when I was running the Arizona television show, I was Producer Peter. So I kind of mm. keep it <laughs> a, a theme, but I've the always alliteration. Been, yeah, I've always been pretty. Uh, but Cody for sure had a hand in uh, the energy change that we went to, where uh, 
with like the whole model walk off and and the, right. you know the the loving not only myself but loving just beauty and everyone and and uh, right. kind of le- leaning in, in more so in that direction and stuff like that and I I appreciate Cody really diving in and helping me find uh, a a direction to kind of go with it instead of just being a generic pretty boy. We're talking to Peter Avalon on AEW Unrestricted. Coming up, we're going to talk about one of my favorite feuds in AEW, Peter and Brandon Cutler, and uh, a little bit about his time on the indies. This is AEW Unrestricted. Tony Schiavone, Aubrey Everett, and Pretty Peter Avalon all with you here. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll tell you how you can join us on a regular basis coming up a little bit later. But uh, uh, we, we took the break and we want to talk about the feud you had with Brandon Cutler. You know mm-hmm. Brandon obviously quite well. It was a feud over losses. It was on AEW Dark, wrestled to a double count out and wrestled to a double DQ. And then, of course, Someone zero has got to go. Uh, talk about that whole thing. I hate Brandon. I hate him. <laughs> I, I really, really, honestly, truthfully, legitimately despise Brandon Cutler. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it, thank, it's very thankful for the Bucks to pair Brandon and I together. Yep. Uh, it, it was definitely a pandemic angle for sure. Right. Uh, right. I think it started – we kind of messed with each other on BTE. I think before then, when we were touring, I remember we posting some of the bits and go going back. I was like, Oh, I forgot about a lot of these bits where we were messing with each other at, at the, uh, at the venues. Um, but then the, when the pandemic started and we had that, we did a couple matches at, uh, I think it was Nick's house, uh, or the compound. Right. <laughs> where, where, where I drove to Brandon's house and, and, and told him you suck. And I, mm-hmm. I just, Kept going. It was just fun. It was nice for the Bucks to kind of uh, give Brandon and I something to do uh, besides what our duties were already at, at Dynamite. So it was like just kind of creative. And then uh, when the fans started really buying into it and getting into it, it was like, this is fun, man. It was all organic. It's all it was all online. It's all silly. It was all a lot of fun. And I I, I have a, I had a blast with Brandon, man. Brandon was great to brainstorm with, to talk shit with, and to, and to get ideas going with. And, and he's a good sport. Cause mm-hmm. we were being dicks. We were being dicks to each other. I remember like stuff that we didn't, that we didn't get uh filmed. Like it's like, no man, go ahead. Rip on me, rip on me. And it's like, it's like giving him examples. And I'm like, Oh, I made myself feel bad. What did I do? You know? Oh man. That, <laughs> that reminds me of our, like prior to the walk off, you were like, Hey, I have, I have something I'm going to say about you. That's like really mean. I'm like, oh, let me know. What do you want to say? And you're like, yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't know. And I think you said like, uh, I, I belong in a horse race or judging something, a horse race, something along the lines. And yeah. it popped me so hard. And I'm like, yes, you have to say. That. You're like, but I feel like a terrible person. I'm like, you are, <laughs> which is why it's great. Do it. Oh my god. But that's the kind of stuff that it. resonates. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Might as well um, embrace it. If I'm going to be scum, I'm just going to be scum. So that's... <laughs> and I love when you have, like, something that's as silly, but then you have those moments of seriousness. Like, Tony had this uh, press conference between you and Brandon. Like, yeah. there must be a winner-style press conference on BTE that was, like, the most serious moment of this feud. Yeah. And then Leva comes out as, like, the damsel that can't choose. And it suddenly is, like, this really deep story with all of these nuances. A lot of nuances, a lot of levels to the storytelling. Yeah. Uh, so so how did you feel about Brandon eventually getting the win? <sighs> Whatever. Say lovey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm more I'm more upset at uh being spiked on D4s and D8s and oh. D12s and and you name it. Now playing Dungeons and Dragons is a whole different story. That's been fun, but I never want to be slammed on the dice ever again. Uh, Peter, uh, before we even go back even any further, uh, I- I'm telling you, I got a lot of memories of of our shows. Mm-hmm. I really do. You know, you, you just think you think back and you think about the pandemic. I know we had the big video recently that showed all this, the memories. But one of my favorite memories is you holding on to the head of Cesar. <laughs> OK, and crying uncontrollably. That was <laughs> so spontaneous to me and so freaking funny. I couldn't get over it. I mean, I just wanted to see it over. There, you, things are going on and you're still there crying like, oh, I miss man. I, poor Cesar, he was hurt. 
it was it was devastating to my heart. Like it still aches. I still weep. I dream about it, and I wake up in night sweats. I love that. Uh, it was this deep emotion, and is now a shirt available on uh, shopaw.com because it was such a traumatic experience. You might as well. Yeah. Yes, I appreciate. <laughs> I, I'm glad that my misery can be enjoyed by all of you. I'm glad. <laughs> what was it? Was that spontaneous, or did you guys plan that? Uh. Okay, you don't need to tell combina- us. A combination of both. Combination okay, of both. Yeah. tremendous. Was, <laughs> you always kind of have a direction and then just feel it out in the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah which I like. It's fun to to kind of have a direction to go and then feel it out and then here's what you get. Yeah. So kind of want to go back, talk a little bit about wrestling training and how you got into wrestling and whatnot. Uh, so you trained at the Charles Mercury School, Venus Fighting Essence, uh, broke mm-hmm. your arm in the first six months, so... How did you end up doing that? <laughs> How do you break your arm in the first six months of wrestling? Man, I went going to this wrestling school. I was going uh, two times a week, almost th- sometimes three times a week with a friend of mine. We were going uh, as often as we could, and we were we were doing great, man. We were killing it. Uh, but Charles Mercury was one of the trainers. Scorpio Sky was one of the trainers, and then a couple other guys that aren't wrestling anymore. Uh, we were, we were knocking it out, man. And it, it was, we had a smaller class. So we were able to get a lot more stuff in. Um, and then I had a practice match that I just tried to do something I shouldn't do. I did a frog splash. Uh, and I, the ring we were training in was not a, was not a nice ring. It was like a rinky dink, uh, junky ring. Uh, the padding in the middle wasn't very good. It was like, I bumped trying to take care of this guy never did a frog splash and I bumped really bad and on a frog splash and I broke my, uh, the radius in my right arm. Uh, and I had to have surgery to put a plate in and I had, I had another surgery to take the plate out. And now I have the metal plate on my keychain that I carry with me every day to <laughs> remind me to maybe not do frog splashes when I'm untrained on how to do them. Only do moves that you've practiced. Yeah. And it's a nice, a nice reminder to, that I'm not, I'm not as indestructible as I thought going in there. You know, what got you interested in wrestling in the first place, Peter? Uh, watching it on TV and talking with it at, at school with friends. It's the same story as a lot of people, and then you sure. sort of stick stick with it. Uh, but it just kind of it, it, it kind of wavered in a, in a. It just was. It would be on TV like anything, like Power Rangers, anything. It mo- it was movements, but then like certain characters really caught my eye, and that's what kind of kept me watching it. it was like. Uh, I love Kurt Angle more than more than anything. Like he is my favorite wrestler of all time. Uh, and and like guys like him and the guys around around that time were who I got really hooked watching. Uh, I told Christian he was one of those guys. I was like, man, you and the Brood is like the coolest shit in the world. And like <laughs> Kurt Angle and all these dudes, like certain certain energies kept me kept me hooked. They kept right. me hooked. So. So you made your debut in 2010, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, uh, where you worked with Cole Cabana, Scorpio Sky, a bunch of the LA guys. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the SoCal wrestling scene, both then and sort of what it's become. I debuted at the very end of 2008. Uh, the The Hollywood show uh, debuted in 2010. And I was, the, I was the very, very first match of the program, uh, opening match uh debut episode of the program and i can't so the very the show starts and then out comes my goofy ass uh and then i i get beat up by colt cabana and that was that was it that was my very first match on television was getting my ass whooped by colt cabana um and i just remember him having the heaviest hands because he chopped (laughs) he chopped me a couple times the first time it was like the double, double gorilla whack chop. And I just remember my soul leaving my body. And then I was like, I have to take another one. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's fast forward here uh, to your time at Impact uh, starting in 2013. We mentioned uh, Nora Furnham. Oh, boy. Yeah. How did that name come about? <sighs> I'm not sure. I don't know who's exactly it came from. It's, I think it was Taz or... Uh, Jeff Jarrett or someone I don't know where the name the name exactly came from I just remember mm-hmm. they were really excited to to tell me that I had this name because it was all funny to them right Furnham's a funny term in wrestling yep sure is. yeah it's an inside term yeah and I don't even I still don't know what it means Furnham that that one I knew was the wrestling term and Norv I think I realized uh it's because at the time I, I had a haircut like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo yeah and Norville is his name 
Okay. <laughs> so I think that's where it came from. Oh. Wow. Mm-hmm. You know Shaggy's real name. Norville. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, something, something new every day. You learn it. Uh, I want to talk about you and you and in PP Ray. Like, oh, oh boy. So I remember just for context, like Peter and, and Ray Rosas are the stripper tag team. And I heard them making the rounds, Southern California, indie scene. Great. I go to bar wrestling the night before Bola. I think it was 2019. And you guys are closing down the show, the main event, like last show for you guys before AEW starts. Mm-hmm. And this this music starts, like Obsession. And you guys just come out gyrating and dancing. And there are people just stuffing dollars at you, like just yes. constantly. And mm-hmm. I was like, these guys make more money in their entrance than most dudes do in merch. We didn't want to start the match. We didn't ever <laughs> want to have the match. We did it. We're like, let's just do this. And sometimes the dances would just go forever. And then when you like you get you kind of take the glance back at the guys waiting to wrestle and they're just like standing there on the apron making no money. Just like, look, can we do this? Oh, my God. So, <laughs> so how does a stripper gimmick start? <laughs> It was very organic. Like uh, bar wrestling turned us into strippers. Uh, mm. We were already kind of just like a dancing duo, goofs. People liked us, and then somebody, one of the, one of the, one of the shows, stuffed a dollar down Ray's shorts, and then people started following suit. And then we're like, "Hey, are we strippers now?" <laughs> <laughs> and then it just like blew up, and we we just we now that the whole thing is that we were just strippers. And then any other show that we went to. We were getting uh, dollars put in our shorts and we were just like amateur strippers now. Uh, Lucha Vavoom embraced our gimmick and they kind of made it their own and they put masks on us and we became the uh, the sexy Mexies, um, which we were just, yes, yeah, sexy Mexican cowboys that were came out. We had our little guns. Uh, we'd rip off our... Uh, or uh, what are those called? The uh, the leggings, and they were like cow cowhide leggings. So we were just mm-hmm. movie style cowboys and sexy. Wow, <laughs> it was it was wild, man. The, the Lucha Vavoom, they ran at the Mayan Theater in downtown LA, big Hollywood show. So it was like we had a uh, it's like Drew Carey uh, doing commentary, the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants doing commentary. We had wild burlesque dances happening in between the the matches. It's it was a wild thing, and then. We're getting beers and everything bought for us after the show. People want to take pictures with us, and you got to keep the mask on because of the mystique of the lucha. Oh, you know? mm-hmm. right. Ooh, who are these uh, sexy dancing? Sexy Mexies. I love sexy Mexies. Oh my god, <laughs> that's such a great name. All right, so you trained David Arquette for his big wrestling comeback. Yes, I yeah, sure talk, did. Talk about that. Uh, how you first met him and how you started training with him. I've been working with the United Wrestling Network uh, for now, my entire career, pretty much. Uh, and for a while, I was running their their wrestling, their wrestle center, their training school. Uh, I got a phone call um, from David Arquette. Somebody had given him my number, and he gave me a call. And then he was interested in training. He actually, he actually left me a voicemail, and I thought it was a rib at first. Uh it was just so casual. Hey, this is David Arquette. You know, I was like, oh, okay, this is silly. I called him and then we set something up and he would drive out to my school in Oxnard, which is about an uh, hour and a half away from Hollywood. So he was uh, making the drive to train a couple of times. And then he was like, I'm, I'm committed to doing this for his, for, you know, his documentary and everything that came out. Uh, right. So he bought, he bought a ring, put it in his backyard. Uh, and I was training him at his house for, for a while. Um, I'd go there once, twice, three times a week, depending on when he was, when he wanted to train. And um, we got him, we got him healthy. We got him into shape, and I, I think I trained him solid. I also was able right. to, to uh, championship wrestling from Hollywood is one of their biggest shows. We ran at the, uh, the Irvine Improv, and the headlining match was me versus him, uh, which was really, really cool. Sold out show it was dope. Did you ever advise him not to get in the ring with Nick Gage? <laughs> So funny story. I'm a, little, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bummed that I didn't get asked about it. Like it just as a little quip about anything is right. he, he asked me to train that week before it. 
And I couldn't do it. And I don't know why I, I, I just, I couldn't make my schedule work with his schedule. And when he, he messaged me about it, he's like, Hey, I have a match coming up and I want to train for it. Say, like, yeah, no, no problem. He told me it was a hardcore match. And I thought, yeah. Okay, what's a couple chairs and cookie sheets and maybe a table? I didn't realize it was this fucking death match with Nick Gage to get your throat throat sliced because I probably would have been like, um, skirt, let's talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, MDK all day is like nothing to fuck around with, dude. For real. <laughs> maybe 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 I could have I could have gone and, and and had your back too, bro. You're good. fucking shit, mm. man. Mud oh. show. Yeah, man. Jesus. What a frightful thing that was. It was man. terrifying. It was yeah, just, it really and was. And then training him again, out, anything after that, he's got this, this little scar now. It's like, brother. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> See, you learn a lesson one time. <laughs> don't, get yeah. in the, don't get in the ring with Nick Gage unless you're absolutely ready to. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. Not around, gla- not around glass and barbed wire. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I worked a match with him at um, WrestleMania weekend, and it was just like, oh, my God. Like, I don't think anyone can be ready for that, so I don't blame no. I don't blame our have- at all. <laughs> Me, like I challenge Nick to a handshaking contest. Like let's, <laughs> like I challenge him to a makeover contest. Let's see who can do the hair, their hair the best. Let's like. <laughs> That's a safe way to do it. Anyway, yeah. you had mentioned a couple times you've got a television background. Uh, yes. 2016, you joined Championship Wrestling from Arizona as the executive producer. Um, so how did being an executive producer for television help you with your in-ring performance? Uh, since being a part of the United Wrestling Network and then working with the Hollywood show and everything, uh, just trying to stay involved, you just kind of start figuring out other stuff. And with the uh, opportunity to kind of work with the Arizona show, it was it was fun. We went from the national product with the Hollywood show to a regional product like this show only airs in Phoenix, Tucson and Yuma, Arizona. So legitimately just the state of Arizona. We're on television and then you can watch it on uh, on the Internet. Uh, we were on the on the air for about uh, we're still on the air. Technically, we just air the Hollywood show now, version of it now. Uh, but when we were making our the original show was on for about three years. We were one year. The first year we were in Tucson, I wasn't in charge. We had we were making a, a move to Phoenix and the show was going under like a management switch and all this. And it was almost going to be eliminated. Uh, so me and my partner, Mick Greenwood, uh, took over the show in charge. Um, he has a background in music and, and running shows and and uh, stuff like that. And then obviously my wrestling background. So our pairing as a team, it, it, it really, really worked for the show. Like we were able to take the show. Uh, the last show we had, we had legitimately eight people in the crowd. Okay. We got duped by a promoter that was helping us out there. And we had somebody that was supposed to be advertised for the show that obviously didn't show up thousands of dollars stolen. It was a mess. And then after that, we were able to, we slow, we, we found a home at the Nile theater and we were able to slowly build our audience into selling out these, selling out the theater with our big shows. And, and, uh, we had guys like MJF on the show, Tim Storm on the show, um, I challenged Nick Aldis to a match for the NWA title, which obviously didn't go in my favor. Uh, so we've had a lot of people pass through, uh, and it's been a great show, and we were able to take it and make it something. In just the two years of its existence in Phoenix, we made it the number one show in Arizona. Uh, everybody wanted to work with us. It was it was wonderful. It was a great experience, and, and I loved creating uh, the stories on it. Like, we have some absurd stuff that we got away with, like – uh, I created an attorney character named Salino Barnes, and he has his his pair of legals, which are his paralegal tag team. And uh, oh. I competed in a gavel on a pole match where I had to pull a gavel <laughs> off the thing, hit it on its base. And then I, I lost the match, which means I lost control of my television show. Uh, we did a lot of this wacky stuff in just two years, and it was it was it was fabulous. It was it was a lot of fun, and it got eyes on it. It got eyes on it in Arizona, especially. They really learned to embrace us in the state. You mentioned on the Chris Jericho podcast, I believe that you had learned from Roddy Piper. Uh, talk about that. That was a one-off thing, random luck. Um, I don't remember what exactly. I think Piper was gonna do a show or something. He had some kind of involvement and his son was also involved with us. So he did uh-huh. a one-off thing with the championship wrestling from Hollywood show. Okay. Um, and he was in town. He was picked up by another wrestler, uh, Jarek 120. And, um, Oh, I've worked with him. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he's wrestling anymore, but it was, so it was, it was Jarek 120 and, and Roddy Piper. 
And uh, he calls me up and he says, hey, man, you want to come come roll around? Roddy's looking for a ring and just wants to get in there, whatever. So I drive down. I lived in uh, Ranch Cucamonga at the time. I drove down to Sherman Oaks uh, in traffic. It was like an hour and a half to get there. Uh, and it's just the three of us. And Roddy Piper's given like a pretty much like a, a, a seminar to me and 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 this guy, Evan, Jared Quintuani. And he, the stuff Roddy was saying pretty much just reinvented the way I thought and saw wrestling because it was all based on just energy and presence and, 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 and your eyes and working the room in just a certain way. And like, we got, we did not get very physical in there. If anything, we circled a little bit and maybe locked up uh, and that's about it. Uh, and it was just all how he worked the room and how he was able to tra- uh, channel energy and control energy. And it was like, damn dude. And, and, uh, the examples he was using is like, you could, you can work an entire room, like, you know, with your eyes and this, and then he's working the room, uh, empty room, the exact way he would work like the Madison square garden or something like that. So to right. get all these people to really, uh, to, to lean forward and sink in and buy into his, what he's selling, you know? Yeah. And, and there's, I have, I think I said it on Jericho's podcast as well. I have one, one thing I wish I did there. And, um, uh, we were we were in the zone and we were we were circling and we got each other's face. He was like, just kind of feel it, just kind of feel it, feel it out, feel it out. And I could feel his energy. I could feel it. I was like, I know what he's talking about. I know what he's talking about. And we started slowly circling, slowly getting closer, looking at each other in the eyes, like we're in a, we're in a, we're in it, we're in it. And then he slaps the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> and I just it pulled me out of it. I just remember like, whack, oh boy, like. <laughs> like i didn't know how to react i looking back now i wish i just slapped the shit out of him back but i was i i was because i know he probably would have loved it he looked like yes but i yeah. in the moment i was like so blown back like what just happened i just got slapped by piper i was like, oh shit and then he was like are you okay and i was like shit i pulled him out of the moment like so that's my one my one thing i wish i did is that i wish i just slapped the shit out of him back uh when we were face to face, only I, only phrases you can say in wrestling. <laughs> yeah, right. But from from that from that day, man, I just I thought I just thought about my work differently. Right. Yeah. We're talking to Peter Avalon on AEW Unrestricted. Coming up, lots of fun questions from fans. You are with us on AEW Unrestricted, Tony Aubrey and Peter Avalon, who we've told some great stories uh, about and um, really have reveled in some of the great entertaining moments that you've brought us, not only online, but uh, on our shows. Uh, Peter, uh, fans are really into your mustache. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Tony on Twitter. This is at Tony on Twitter. It's not Tony Sean. It's at Tony on Twitter. What's the key to having such an amazing mustache? Mm, patience because boy i had to turn into my like i had to get closer to my 30s for this to ever come in the right, right. way yep oh, i was yeah. always told you got to stick with it yeah yeah you I, just got to stick with it i yeah. tried the mustache one time in my uh early 20s as a as a gag it always starts as a gag and it was so just pencil thin i was like i can't walk around with this I mean, or or you can. It's or commitment. I'm, John, yeah, I'm just John Waters with the right. little, just you know. Coming around with a little pencil-thin mustache. I mean, some people make it work. Some people make it right. work. Right. Uh, at In Case You Missed It on Twitter, uh, I'm digging the wig man. I also love the makeover idea. Shout out to beautiful people. Uh, you could do hair cutting, hairspray, beard trims, and even cologne. Give J.D. Drake a plant sprayer. Uh, anything, uh, any thoughts on ramping the gimmick up to uh, be even more outrageous? Just stay tuned. Just stay tuned. Ah, I love it. People get people give us ideas like we're not already in like thinking the same way. Like, come on, come on. <laughs> stay tuned is is great because <laughs> JD Drake. Yeah. Oh, Jeez. <laughs> what a man. What, what a man. What a man. Uh, sandwich lover. Sandwich lover on Twitter. Got to think about this one, Peter. All right. What kind of sandwich best represents the wingman? Hmm. Maybe like a nice Italian, because it's a yeah. bunch of meats put together, and it's delicious. <laughs> so much meat. Mm, a lot of meat. 
A lot of meat. Yikes. Uh, <laughs> Go to the next one quickly. Okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, seriously. I was like, a Reuben? No, nah, no, nah, Italian. That one's good. Uh, Kerry Shaw on Twitter. Uh, how many Ric Flair Car Shield commercials have you starred in? I've only seen two so far. Uh, I think I think there's only... I think maybe th- there's three of them. The one that always airs is the one that I'm getting chopped. But there's there's one <laughs> there's one of me. I'm in the background wooing, and then uh, there's another one where I there's scenes where I'm getting beat up by Ray Rosas, and then also beating up Ray Rosas. I clothesline him in one point, and then he jumps on me at another. Um, but I know the one that always airs is him chopping me. <laughs> Here's a pretty cool question, uh, and it's from Andy on Twitter. He's put some thought in this. This is pretty cool. It's something that we had talked about earlier. Right. With uh, John Moxley and JB now using licensed theme music, uh, did you ever hit up TK to license Obsession for you? Ooh, man. If I if, if my man Ray Rosa sits next to me, it would just start to play out of our ears. I think so. I think he would have to license it. You know what I mean? Because just comes out. It just comes out. Well, it's the old <laughs> it's the old Saturday Night Main Event theme theme, right? It's it's the PP Ray entrance music, Tony. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's where they got that from. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Could you imagine yeah. Hulk Hogan and then shaking their ass like me and Ray Rosas? No way. <laughs> Horrendous. No. Nah, doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> uh, at Clarence Alexander Pryon on Twitter, uh, I so love you being pretty Peter Avalon. Uh, would you wear Speedos like me to be ready for a comeback summer this year? Oh, I already do. There you go. Yeah. Boom. Way ahead of you, man. I hang out with a Brazilian guy. We have to wear Speedos. One hundred percent. It's requirement. Yeah. Fire Pro Kirtland. That's Fire Pro Kirtland on Twitter. Who was your favorite tag team when you were growing up watching wrestling? Edge and Christian. That's not a kiss ass response. I swear it was Edge sure. and Christian. I swear Absolutely. it was. Uh, I loved whatever I mean, they were with the Hardy Boys and, and the Dudley Boys and Great stuff. Uh, they were just they were funny. They were just funny, man. Yeah. They were so funny. Mustard Vengeance on Twitter. Man, these names are always so great. Yeah. yeah. Mustard Vengeance on Twitter asks, they are good. Uh, have you pushed to have footage of you holding Cesar crying in your dynamite intro? Uh, because it should absolutely be there. Now there's a demand. <laughs> that should be just the entire thing theme, the dynamite. It's just him, me holding him as dynamite. <laughs> Father Trevino. Father Trevino on Twitter. Maybe it's Father Trevino. On Twitter, uh, do you miss being a librarian? Uh, at times, at times when I get when it gets loud in the back and I get overwhelmed in my head, it's nice to be able to. It was nice to be able to, you know, retire to the library and find some some peace and quiet. I don't have that right now. Got a question from Zach Man on Twitter, one that I'm also interested in. Uh, so, tax bumping on tax is terrible. I think bumping on Legos is also terrible. But there's big question. How gnarly was that dice bump that you did? In Awful. The color much? Awful. Have you seen those D4s? They're, They're pyramids. Massive. They're points. Yeah. <laughs> what are they called? Caltrops or something? There's like they pop your tires. They're, they're, they're weapons. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's awful. It's terrible. Uh, this is a bizarre one. So hang with us. Uh, and the uh, the name the is uh, bizarre too. This is from uh, Nat, uh, Nazi Puncher Extraordinaire on oh Twitter. Uh, Peter, you have one of the most punchable faces in wrestling. Now, I mean that in the highest compliment. What inspired your look? Well, I guess what inspired my looks was uh, genetics, my yes. DNA. <laughs> uh, my When my mother and my father came to, together, June 14, 1989, so nine months prior to that when they came together. Do you know this the specific kind of, date? Uh, no, I don't want to know the specific <laughs> date either. Um, but, yeah, so I, I appreciate the compliment, but I think that's more a compliment for my mom and dad. So good job, gotcha. pa- good Pedro job. and Patty. Like. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> oh, boy. By the book 81 on Twitter. Uh, any chance of seeing Ray Rosas with the wingman? I know he had a couple dark matches way back when, but I think pairing you guys... How badly do you want your tag team partner back? I don't know if the the world, the world, I don't know if they're ready. 
because the minute PP Ray hits your hits your eyeballs, it's your favorite thing. It's in the it's world. intense. I can I can say yeah. from experience, it's it's a lot to take in, we, especially when you're not ready for it. We have changed lives. We really have. <laughs> oh yeah. uh uh froby one froby one on twitter and this goes back to what we were talking about earlier about you being an executive producer of championship wrestling from arizona uh do you get to do much production in AEW, given your experience with uh, championship wrestling AEW, no um it's fun to be able to like brainstorm when we get to brainstorm ideas like if if we'll come, uh, if we're to present an idea of like, Hey, we have a promo. Sometimes it's kind of bare bones, like promo. Here's the, here's the gist. So then we can kind of brainstorm with uh, production and, and create something. So like in that sense, I've been able to, to play and that's been fun. So I get to speak up and, 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 uh, and interject and be a part of the, that creation. So that's cool. But in the full encompassing, like, here's my idea. Uh, no for BTE. Yes. Yeah. I think BTE, everybody sort of has a hand in their own, uh, yeah. Throwing yeah, bits and whatnot. That's good stuff. Absolutely, man. absolutely. It's been fun, and it kind of it gives people a, a challenge on how to they, on, on, a, on a goal they want to uh, accomplish. Like, how can I shoot something? Like right now, we just shot something in the can that it took a lot of time to finagle a camera angle and little swoops and edits. And it's like it just kind of gets your brain working, you know. All right, Peter, you're a good man. Enjoy all your stuff. We really do, man. We Thank really you. Do. Thanks for having guy. me. Thank no you so problem. much. All right, you can. Uh, Follow him on Instagram at PPA All Day. That's PPA All Day. And on Twitter at P Avalon. You can listen to AEW Unrestricted Podcast for free wherever you get your podcasts on your favorite apps. Uh, and then watch us on YouTube uh, on Monday mornings if you prefer to consume uh, podcasts with your eyeballs. Because definitely, <laughs> I mean, Peter's one of those guys. You just got to look at him, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The, 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 enchant Avalon. the <laughs> enchanting uh, aura behind me. I Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> uh, be, uh, by the way, you can search AEW Unrestricted on YouTube, and that's where you can pull up the podcast if you haven't subscribed already. Uh, and don't forget Elevation Monday nights, Darks on Tuesday nights, all on our YouTube channel. And then we've got some big shows coming up during the week. Yeah, we got Dynamite every Wednesday night, 8 o'clock, 7 central on TNT. We're back on Wednesdays, finally. Oh, my God, everything feels right. And pretty soon, coming up in August, we've got Rampage coming on Fridays. It'll be Friday night at 10 o'clock Eastern, by the way. Yeah. All right, Peter, thanks a lot again. My name is Tony Schiavone, and she is... Aubrey Edwards. What's up? Peace. Thanks for listening to Unrestricted. Bye.